Today, I wanna show you how you can record your screen using either a laptop or a desktop PC. Believe it or not, Windows 11 comes with a free and built-in screen recorder. We'll start by looking at that, and then we'll also look at a few other options. At the very end, I'll show you the screen recorder that I personally use. It's by far the most powerful, but it also has the steepest learning curve. All right, let's check these out. We're going to start with the screen recorder that comes built in with Windows 11. You don't have to go out and install anything. I know Microsoft doesn't do a great job promoting these tools, but hey, now you know. This one is called the Xbox Game Bar. It's called the Game Bar, but you can use it to record just about anything, or mostly everything. To launch the Game Bar, first open up the window that you want to record. I'm going to open up the website for my favorite cookie company, the KevinCookieCompany.com. Next, press the Windows logo key together with the G key, G as in game, and this launches up the Game Bar. On the Game Bar, click on the Capture icon, then click on the Record icon, and now we are recording our screen. Once you're all done, you can click on the stop button and then you can click in to view the recording. And check that out, we have completed our first recording. For the game bar, I can also modify some of the settings. Over on the right hand side, if we click on the settings gear, here I can configure the shortcut keys. For example, I could set a shortcut key to both start and stop my recording. Here too, I can also configure what audio I want to record. Do I just want the system audio or do I also want the microphone? Now, it seems like the settings are fairly limited, but there are actually more settings. They just happen to be in a different place. That's not the best design, but hey, that's what we have to work with. Open up your control panel and over on the left hand side, click on gaming, then select captures. Here we can adjust things like the recording length, the audio quality, the frame rate, and the video quality. You can even decide whether or not you want to show your mouse. Now, this screen recorder probably sounds pretty amazing. It's free, it comes pre-installed, what's not to like? Well, it turns out it does have a few downsides. First off, you cannot record your desktop. You also cannot record File Explorer. You can't jump between windows, and if you open up a legacy Windows 32 app, it won't capture any of the menus. If those things don't affect you, this screen recorder is probably good for you. Otherwise, we're going to look at a few other options. Next up, we have Zoom video conferencing. Wait, what? Zoom is a screen recorder? That's right. Zoom is a fairly functional screen recorder that has lots of pretty phenomenal tools. To get Zoom, head to the website zoom.us and you can sign up for free. Once you finish installing, you'll see an interface that looks like this. Next, click on New Meeting. And I know we're going into a meeting, but we're purely using this to record our screen. Next, click on Share Your Screen. The thing that I really like about Zoom is not only can you just record your desktop, you could record a window, a whiteboard, your iPhone or iPad, and you can even record yourself in front of a virtual PowerPoint presentation. That's pretty cool. Here, I'm going to select Record Desktop. Now that I'm sharing my screen, to record it, head up to the top navigation bar. Over on the right hand side, click on the More Ellipsis, and here you see an option to start the recording. You can also press the shortcut key, Alt together with R, R as in Record. Now that my recording is active, I can use the annotation tools to annotate my screen. This is something that the other screen recorders don't have. Once I'm all done, I'll press Alt-R to stop my recording. Once my meeting is all done, I can open up File Explorer, and here I see an MP4 with my recording. Next up, we're going to look at a screen recorder that you probably already have installed on your computer. It comes with Microsoft PowerPoint. Within PowerPoint, in the Insert tab, over on the right-hand side, you have the option for a screen recording. You can also get to it through the search bar up on top, or you could click on the record tab, and here too we see the option for screen recording. Let's click on that. This opens up the screen recording interface. 
It's pretty basic, but it gets the job done. First, I could select the area of my screen that I want to record. I could select the entire screen or just one specific area. I could toggle my audio on or off, and I could even select whether I want to include my mouse in the recording. I'll click on record, and here I see a countdown timer. Once it counts down, my recording is now active. To turn it off, I'll go back up to the top and then click on the stop icon. This now inserts my screen recording onto a slide. I can select the video and then click on the playback tab up on top. Here I have some basic editing tools. I can click on trim and I could cut off from the beginning or the end of the video. To save the video, I can right click on it and then go down to save as. And here I could just save it directly as an MP4. Or alternatively, I could just leave it on my slide. Last up, we have OBS Studio. And once again, this is the most powerful screen recorder. And this is the one that I personally use for all of my videos. You can download this at obsproject.com. It works across all different platforms. Not only can you record with it, but you can also stream with it. Once you finish installing OBS, you'll see an interface that looks like this. But hey, my screen is black, where's my desktop? Well, first we have to add a source. Down below, let's click on the plus icon, and here let's add our display. Here, I'll select my monitor, and just like that, I can now see my display within OBS. At this point, I could simply click on the start recording icon, and my screen recording will be active. I could also stop the recording once I'm all done. Now, let's say I wanna add my webcam. I can do that as well. Once again, OBS is very powerful. Here, I'll go down to sources, click on the plus icon again, and this time I'll select my video capture device. I'll click on OK, and this camera looks fine. Once again, I'll click on OK. Here, I can see my camera now in OBS, and I can move it wherever I want on the screen. I can also resize it, so I have lots of control. Here too, I can click on the record icon and that'll kick off my recording. In the top left hand corner, I can go up to the file menu, click into settings, and there are tons of different settings available to me. If I go down to hotkeys, here I can set various shortcut keys to both start and stop my recording. Now, once again, OBS has a ton of functionality and there's a little bit of a learning curve involved. If you want a full tutorial of how to use OBS Studio, check out the link up above or also down below in the description. Now that we've looked at all of the different ways that you can record your screen, and there are many different options. Next, you might want to highlight your mouse just to make it stand out a little bit more in your recording. I recently pulled together a video that shows you all of the different ways that you can personalize your mouse. For example, you can change your mouse icon, you can make it bigger, you can change the color, you could highlight it, you could focus around it. There are many different options, and here too I've included a link up above and down below in the description. Once you have your screen recording, you might be wondering, well, how do I edit it? What if I want to cut out a part, or what if I want to change what's included in the recording? Well, you need some type of video editing software. And just like with the Xbox Game Bar, it turns out Windows comes with a free video editor built in. Once again, Microsoft could probably do a better job promoting all of these different tools. To load this, go down to search and then type in video editor. Then click on the best result. This will launch the Windows video editor. And here you could pull together a pretty basic video. It gets the job done and has just about all the tools you need. If you want a tutorial on how to get started with the Windows Video Editor, once again, I've included a link in the description. If you want something a little bit more professional and also powerful, I recommend using a tool called DaVinci Resolve. This is the video editor that I personally use to pull together all of my videos. It has a fairly steep learning curve, but don't worry, here too, I've also pulled together a video that I'll show you how you can get started with it, once again, up above or in the description. All right, well, that's how you can get started with recording your screen on Windows 11. To watch more videos like this, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.